is Tesla's recommendation to charge lithium iron phosphate equipped standard range uh, Tesla vehicles to a 100% state of charge actually a good idea for battery life? The answer to this question may actually surprise you. So let's dive into the data and find out the answer to this question. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Tesla somewhat recently switched over to lithium iron phosphate batteries for their standard range electric vehicles. And with that switch, they officially recommend charging these lithium iron phosphate equipped vehicles regularly to a 100% state of charge, which is in contrast to the regular nickel based batteries, which should only be regularly charged to an 80 or 90% state of charge. I'll talk more in a minute about why Tesla is recommending this 100% charge for these LFP uh, batteries. Um, but it appears like data that's coming out so far is showing that these lithium iron phosphate battery packs are actually degrading quicker than the nickel based packs. In order to get some real world data, I reached out to Tessie, who is the maker of the Android and Apple phone application for your Tesla. And in addition to many other features, this particular application also allows you to monitor your battery health as well. They graciously shared a few graphs and some data with me about the expected battery degradation in the average Tesla vehicle. In this chart, you can see the average capacity retention by mile for the S, 3, X, and Y. And as you can see from this chart, the greatest amount of decrease in battery capacity happens initially, but it starts tapering off quite a bit once you approach 100,000 miles. This also goes along well with a chart that Tesla has shared in the past showing the average capacity retention for the Model S and the Model X. And once again, you can see that there's a drop initially, and then the taper is a little bit slower. Now do note that this average data that I shared from Tessie, that includes primarily, if not exclusively, nickel-based battery packs. But what about lithium iron phosphate-based battery packs? What do the degradation numbers look like for those packs? In Tessie's email response to me, they mentioned the following about lithium iron phosphate uh, battery pack degradation, quote, the brand new LFP batteries will degrade substantially quicker. There's not long-term retention data for LFP batteries on the market yet, but the trend tends to be substantially faster degradation. Trends show them stabilizing at around that 10% degradation mark in about half the time as non-LFP batteries, around 50,000 miles instead of 100,000 miles. So is Tesla's recommendation to regularly charge your lithium iron phosphate based battery pack to 100%, is that actually leading to this faster degradation? First of all, it's important to note that a lithium iron phosphate battery is still a lithium ion battery. And no matter the cathode chemistry, lithium ion batteries naturally with age will store less and less energy um, due to what we call degradation. Now, of course, Tesla in their warranties guarantees a certain amount of battery uh, capacity retention. For instance, for the Tesla Model S and X, they guarantee eight years or 150,000 miles with a minimum of a 70% retention of battery capacity. For the Model 3 standard range vehicle, that's eight years, 100,000 miles. And for the long range of performance Model 3 and Model Y, that is eight years and 120,000 miles. The reason this is important is that if you can reduce the amount of uh, degradation to your battery and retain as much battery capacity as possible, this gives you more range, more usable range um, with your vehicle. For instance, with a long range all wheel drive Model Y with an EPA range of 330 miles, once that battery degrades to a 90% capacity retention, you will have a little bit under 300 miles of range. If it degrades to 80%, you'll have a bit over 260 miles of usable range. And if it degrades to 70%, you'll have a bit over 230 miles of range. So obviously, if you can limit the amount of battery degradation, that's going to be a great thing. So once again, going back to the recommendation of charging lithium iron phosphate batteries regularly to 100%, um, I found a great um, article from Push EVs. In this article, they point out the fact that one of the key reasons that lithium iron phosphate battery cells generally have a longer cycle life than the nickel-based battery cells comes down to a lower operating voltage. This article explains that at higher operating voltages, the liquid electrolyte in a battery starts corroding the current collectors. So obviously then a lower operating voltage is going to mean a longer lasting battery. This article then goes on to make it very clear that just like any other battery, lithium iron phosphate batteries are not immune 
to uh, battery degradation due to frequent full charges. So if this is true, then why is Tesla recommending that you regularly charge your battery to a 100% state of charge? Well, this Push EVs article also answers that question saying, the only reason why Tesla recommends to fully charge the Model 3 cars that have LFP batteries is because it helps the BMS, the battery management system, to estimate the available battery capacity more precisely. Do note that in the Tesla Model 3 owner's manual, when it talks about fully charging the lithium iron phosphate battery pack regularly, Tesla also includes this statement. Following the above guidance maximizes available range and improves the vehicle's ability to accurately determine the state of charge and estimated range. So that really brings up the question, why is this necessary with lithium iron phosphate battery packs and not nickel based battery packs? Why is it that a BMS system has a harder time with the lithium iron phosphate batteries calculating the estimated uh, charge percentage and uh, the amount of range available? In order to really understand this, it's important that we talk about BMS systems for a minute, battery management systems. And one of the main ways that they determine the state of charge for a battery pack is based on the voltage of the battery cells throughout a charge and discharge cycle. For example, a fully charged nickel manganese cobalt battery will reach somewhere around 4.2 volts, but when fully discharged, that same battery will drop to somewhere around 2.75 volts. On the flip side, a fully charged lithium iron phosphate battery will reach somewhere around 3.6 volts, and when fully discharged, it'll reach somewhere around 2.5 volts. So when a battery management system measures these drops in voltage, that can help be an indicator of where the state of charge is. However, the problem really lies with lithium iron phosphate batteries because the actual discharge curve for a lithium iron phosphate battery is quite different from a nickel based battery. I found this research paper which compares various lithium ion battery chemistries and this paper had the following lithium iron phosphate versus nickel manganese cobalt discharge curve chart. As you can see there in figure A on the left hand side, that represents a lithium iron phosphate based battery discharge curve. And you can see there that the voltage drops quickly and then it's pretty flat throughout most of the cycle and then it just drops. Whereas when you look at the right hand side figure B, the voltage curve is pretty gradual all the way throughout the discharge cycle and then kind of tapers off at the end. So with this very flat discharge curve, for instance, the difference between an 80% state of charge and a 60% or an 80% state of charge and like a 40% state of charge, the amount of voltage difference between those two is very uh, small as compared to a nickel based cell. So that makes it a little harder for the BMS system to accurately calculate range. So by charging your lithium iron phosphate equipped car regularly to 100%, this apparently helps calibrate the BMS system to give you an accurate reading of remaining battery life. Otherwise, Tesla knows that if you don't regularly charge to 100%, you could be driving along thinking that you have 100 miles of range left and um, the BMS system could realize that you really don't have 100 miles of range left, but you only have like 20 or 25 miles of range left, and that could put you in a bad position. So by regularly charging the vehicle to 100%, that helps avoid this kind of miscalculation by a battery management system from happening. So really going back to that question at the beginning, yes, technically speaking, if you charge your lithium iron phosphate based battery pack regularly to 100%, that will lead to a bit faster degradation and a shorter battery life than if you had maintained in max 80% state of charge. However, I wouldn't worry about this too much because as we mentioned earlier, much in part due to a lower operating voltage, lithium iron phosphate batteries naturally last longer than nickel based cells. So in the long run, you may see a quicker drop to a 10% degradation number with a lithium iron phosphate battery pack that is regularly charged to 100%. But in the long run, I expect that battery pack to still outlast a nickel based pack that is regularly charged to say like 80%. With that being said, I'd like to quickly talk about some general advice to help you extend the life of your Tesla battery pack. The first piece of general advice to extend your Tesla's battery life is to not regularly charge above 80 or 90%. Within that, it's also best to not regularly discharge the battery below 5%. In the battery care section of the Tesla Model 3 owner's manual, Tesla reiterates to never allow uh, the battery to fully discharge. And it mentions that the battery can discharge at a rate of approximately 1% per day. So that if you're going to go ahead and store a vehicle for a period of time, say like at an airport or something like that, make sure that you have the sufficient amount of charge 
to account for this so the battery doesn't fully discharge. Tesla also recommends that you leave your vehicle plugged in when not in use. Once again, in the Tesla Model 3 owner's manual, Tesla gives the following advice. The most important way to preserve the high voltage battery is to leave your vehicle plugged in when you're not using it. This is particularly important if you're not planning to drive Model 3 for several weeks. Tesla also recommends that you regularly charge your vehicle. Once again, in the Model 3 owner's manual, they say there is no advantage to waiting until the battery level is low before charging. In fact, the battery performs best when charged regularly. It's also best, if possible, to protect your battery from extreme temperatures. Tesla's official advice is to avoid temperatures above 140 degrees Fahrenheit or below negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit for more than 24 hours at a time. But what about fast charging? Is it a bad idea to regularly charge your Tesla vehicle at a supercharger? Do you know that Tesla's BMS system does a really good job at adjusting the peak charging rate to protect the battery? Tesla's battery management system considers battery cell temperature, making sure the battery's not too hot or too cold. It takes into account the state of charge and various other factors to determine the max amount of power that can be received into the battery pack. The reason this is really important, and the reason that a BMS system has to balance all these factors, comes down to just how batteries work. When you charge an electric vehicle and the ions are moving from the cathode to the anode, a process happens called intercalation. And basically what intercalation means is that these lithium ions are actually finding their way into the anode material, generally graphite. But if this charge rate is too high, this intercalation process doesn't happen fast enough and some of these ions start forming on the surface of the graphite anode. And that leads to what is called lithium plating. There are a lot of different problems that lithium plating can cause, but one of the big ones when we talk about capacity retention comes down to a lower amount of lithium that is available um, because a lot of it is plated on the surface of the anode, and thus that lowers the battery capacity. So really to answer the question about fast charging and battery life, a sophisticated BMS system will limit the amount of charge being accepted by a battery pack and really will limit much of this problem from happening. But once again, if all you have access to is fast chargers, I wouldn't worry about this too much because Tesla has a very sophisticated BMS system. So really to wrap this up, Yes, charging your lithium iron phosphate battery regularly to 100% will lead to a faster degradation um, than if you charged it regularly to like say 70, 80, or 90%. However, the trade-off seems to be worth it if you want an accurate calculation of range that is left in the vehicle. But I still expect that in the long run, once again, that these lithium iron phosphate battery packs will outlast the nickel-based packs. Um, even with this recommendation. Do let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. And also, if you have something to share about this topic or some other topic related to battery technology, uh, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. I also wanna take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.